One of the most practical applications of sociological research to population health is through program evaluation and the creation of SMART goals when designing a program, policy, initiative, or business that is designed to improve our collective well-being. So when it comes to program evaluation, the overall goal is really to collect information about your population served, as well as information about the actual impact that you're having. So program evaluation comes into play when you have a new program, when you want to seek additional funding and demonstrate the effectiveness of your program. And it's also really helpful in the initial stage of designing a venture to kind of course correct and make adjustments in your approach. There often isn't one person who is dedicated to program evaluation at a business, a nonprofit, or a community organization. So a lot of times this work is a collaboration between multiple people that work there or are involved in the project, or you can hire outside consultants to help you do program evaluation. Program evaluation is something that you can budget into grants and other sources of funding for your venture. But program evaluation starts with SMART goals, which are very helpful in really guiding your entire vision, but also grounding your vision in measurable, actionable pieces that can be tracked over time. And really when you have a long-term view, you can really release any expectations of a certain outcome and enjoy the process of learning more about what you're doing. And of course, over time, you can do it even better the more information that you have. So let's go over SMART goals. SMART goals start out by being specific. Oftentimes we are driven to be involved in a project to improve our well-being because of a deep sense of meaning or a very broad, overarching, almost philosophical or ideological mission. And that is very good for tapping into the passion and the drive that you need to be involved in something in the long haul. But specific goals are very helpful to really drill down in what you're actually intending to happen, both in the long term, but also in the short term. That leads us to the M in SMART, which stands for measurable. There are so many things in life that we really can't put a number on, but there's a saying in population health that you can't improve what you don't measure. So it's critical to be able to come up with measurable items that you can gather in the form of both quantitative data and qualitative data. And so remember, this could be things that are actually a number count, like how many people are we gonna serve? But it can also be more qualitative. This type of data you get from focus groups and interviews where you're really digging deep into the impact the program has on your population served. So when we talk about measurement, we're really conceptualizing the types of questions that we might ask and get answers to. But it's also important to think about things that you can quantify so that you can track them over time. The A stands for attainable, and this is a process. So sometimes we get involved in a venture that really lends itself to having very big goals. And again, that's a good thing. But we really want to think about what is attainable both in the short and long term. And when it comes to program evaluation and data collection, it's not really about meeting a certain benchmark. It's just about collecting this information and learning more. So just because you set a goal that you think is 
attainable, but also maybe not a good enough goal for what you really want, that's okay because we're just in the information gathering phase, both before the intervention or the launch and after when we collect that impact data. So this is often a group conversation of what the team thinks is attainable. And it's really just something to keep in mind. Now the R stands for relevant and this is where you really can translate the philosophy around your vision into items that you can measure as well as items that reflect your values, the values of the people that you serve. And so in other words, this is going to be a combination of the values and the goals and the approaches of different stakeholders. So you may have some items to measure that are really about a business's bottom line. So these are going to be very relevant for the folks that are primarily focused on how revenue may change over time. You could also develop measurements that are more about, let's say, a paradigm shift or a cultural shift that you want to happen in your population served or for your individual client. And so this is going to be a different set of questions to elicit this data that's more about a cultural shift. So in other words, relevance is where you create a set of measures that is really reflective, not only of the pieces that are gonna be very necessary in a practical sense, but also things that you want to see happen with your program or business that you can collect information on as well. So it's really a variety of measures that becomes the standard for your program. When you get to the evaluation phase, it becomes important how relevant your metrics are because at the end of that phase, at least in the first cycle, and it can be an ongoing process, you can take your team together and really understand did you meet those goals that you had as far as the more subtle shifts that you wanted to see, as well as meet the metrics that say may open doors to getting more funding, more investors, more clients, etc. And that leads us to the last T in the SMART. And that piece is that it needs to be time specific, time bound. And that just means that there is some kind of due date around it. A lot of times if you are doing a intervention to improve population health, you're taking a long-term view. Prevention happens more slowly than a quick fix. So there needs to be some boundaries around your work. At the beginning, you may be able to collect information on who participated in the program and their satisfaction. You may have other variables that you collect data on farther into the future, say after three, six, nine, 12 months, where you're really measuring the sustainability. And so those pieces you'll be able to collect later. And when it comes to long-term health improvement, you can even get creative with existing external data sets that may be available through even hospital data or census data, where if your initiative is broad enough and it's impacting enough people, you can actually start to measure the community and society level impact with some of those secondary data sets. So it is a long process, but the important thing is that your goals are smart and that you have an open mind in collecting information, not only about your population served, but about the actual impact that you have. And this whole process is not to judge a program or a business to be good or bad. It's not even really to say if there's improvement happening, it's really an ongoing learning process where you're able to be open enough to tweak your approach to have the lasting impact that you want.